found that the world is not moving fast enough on reducing malnutrition in all its forms. So we track progress against the global targets for reducing all forms of malnutrition. We found that around 41 countries are on target for reducing what's called stunting. That's when children don't grow properly. So that's very good news. We also found some countries are, are reducing the amount of children who are wasted. That means they're underweight. But um, most countries are not on target. And there isn't a single country that is doing well enough on reducing anemia and micronutrient deficiencies. And there isn't, aren't any countries who are doing well in reducing overweight and obesity. So as a result of the fact that progress is too slow, we estimate about one third of the global population is experiencing some form of malnutrition, whether that be overweight and obesity or a form of diet-related non-communicable disease or underweight or, or hunger. So, in other words, malnutrition remains a very significant problem. We also found, unfortunately, that there is an inadequate action. So we find that around 62% of countries do not have any policies into place designed to encourage healthier diets in order to reduce overweight and obesity. We find that only 36% of countries have fully implemented the code on the marketing of breast milk substitutes which uh, intends to enhance breastfeeding, a very important intervention in nutrition. We didn't find any companies, any businesses, which have actually um, uh, integrated targets for increasing vegetable consumption and vegetable use in their products. We found that on average around 15% of children, only 15% of children in low and middle income countries are actually achieving an adequate diet. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. The good news is that we do have success stories from those countries that have done well. We know there are programs and policies that work. And we know that they're going to work better when there are specific targeted programs combined with broader changes to systems, social systems, health systems, and food systems. And to do that, our first and strongest recommendation was that countries should put into place, and businesses, and NGOs, what we call smart targets and smart policies and smart objectives. So that means policies, objectives and targets which are specific, measurable, attributable, uh, relevant and time bound. And we find that if countries' businesses do that, they are more likely to put them into place because the Global Nutrition Report and other entities are holding those entities accountable for what they are doing. So that is our number one recommendation and we call on, on countries, businesses and NGOs to do so.